Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. We're going to show you something here. What I want to get into, as you can see in the title of the video, is when will this scripture be fulfilled? Revelation 3 and 9. Now, we, uh, over the years, this scripture was always used to describe, you know, the small hats. All right. Because they say that they're Jews and they're not. Okay. But um, you actually have to go into the history of what was happening to the churches around this time. What was happening to the churches at the time Yahweh Shai was on the scene? Who was his main opposition? It was the Jews, those of the circumcision who were raised in the customs, all right? And the, the, uh, the uh, wicked scribes, Pharisees, and, and Sadducees, and priests, chief priests, who basically had sold out to the Roman Empire, all right, and were keepers of the temple. All right, and they were using that authority, all right, to have members of the church of Yahweh Shai put to death. They used the authority they had to have Yahweh Shai put to death. See, they used their authority to have Stephen put Stephen put to death. Paul was a part of that order, but he repented. So when you read this, although we can use this for the small hats, the so-called Jews that are faking the funk today. When you read Revelation 2 and 9, 3 and 9, understand that this is really talking about Israelites. All right, Shalom, brothers and sisters. We want to give all glory and praise to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be bound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on our second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So today we're going into a lesson concerning uh, the book of Revelation. Uh, it's actually going to deal with multiple parts but the issue we're dealing with is gonna be coming from a doctrine from GMS uh, that we saw being taught by one of their uh, their elders saying that Revelation 3 and 9 is taught, saying that the those that are Jews and are not are talking about the wicked Israelites and not talking about the small hats. So one of the things that he was being talked about was saying that the wicked Israelites in the kingdom were gonna be bowing down and acknowledging the righteous ones, which is a false doctrine. And one of the reasons why we have to go into this is because this type of doctrine is being taught. The reason why it exists is because of the fact that you have people that don't believe in, in uh, the judgment, basically resurrection of the dead, of the just and the unjust. So because they don't believe in the principle of that, they don't understand everything else. So they don't, and because they don't understand that, they also don't understand another principle, which is eternal judgment. with the resurrection of the dead, which is also another one of the other principles. Yeah. So they all go together. You know, they all go together for the for the understanding of how to get everlasting life. When one rejects these principles, they're liable to start teaching things contrary and making up doctrine. In fact, when we were watching this video from this guy from GMS, Yashua in Dallas, you could tell that he was confused on what he was bringing out. So we're not going to go into everything. We're going to go and stress kind of more of the aspect of what he talked about, which is saying about who is going to, about the wicked Israelites, if they don't make it, they're going to be bowing down in the kingdom to the righteous ones. And we're going to prove that that is incorrect. That's right. So go ahead, Art. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 3. I'm going to start up a little at 7. Verse 7. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things said he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opened and, and no man shed it, and shed it and no man opened. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, 
and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. So, when you go into that, you have to ask yourself this question. If you do a survey of people walking down the street, and you ask them, where do the Jews live? Or can you name me a famous Jew? They're not gonna name you, or they're not gonna name our people. That's right. They're not gonna name any, they're not gonna name a LeBron James or a Michael Jordan. They're not gonna name a, 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 a what do you call it, what, what's this guy? Sinan Bull. Yep. They're not gonna name uh, uh, Tupac Amaru, the Inca leader that led the rebellion against the Spanish out there in Peru. They're not gonna name those guys. They're gonna name small hats. That's right, man. We don't got to get into who they are. That's right. What is understood don't got to be explained. If you do a survey right now, they're not. They're going to say that they are the ones. Those are the ones that's been set up on this earth. Yeah. To to imitate a certain people, man. Yeah. A certain not they done stole a certain identity. They done stole Those the are the ones set up, and this is the ones that we're going to prove who Yahweh Shai was talking about. And man. they took the land into their possession, like the scripture that's says. Right. That's so right. So the the most high, see. The spirit of the Lord is so cold, it prophesies not only in that time, but in 2,000 years to come. Because like the brother brought out, what did you, you say you was reading uh, yesterday? Oh, like you just said, though, they took the land into possession. Who were ruling, who was ruling in Jerusalem during the time when Yahweh Shai walked the earth, man? It was Herod, man. That's right. The Herodians. Yep. They was ruling. Yep. And, and what line they was from? The line of Esau, man. Yep. And these people were calling themselves Jews, man. Yep. Herod had studied and studied the Jew religion, the Jew, the Jew, uh, you know, all the concepts, the the laws, the statute, laws, the commandments. Herod had studied that. Yeah, and you know what's crazy is when you were born, when Yahweh was born, he had the, the priests and the people breaking down the scriptures that's to him right. about the prophecy yeah. about the Messiah to come. Yeah, that's right. Then his remember he had also built up the uh, the temple. He was the ruler of the Jews back then, man, in Jerusalem. Yeah, he'd have, re, he'd have renovated and re, uh, rebuilt up the temple. Yep. Even he expanded the temple during that time as well. Yeah, he sure did. A life scale model the of the model. temple that you could actually buy. Yeah. You could actually get like a poster. There's actually a picture. I think I got it from your book. That what's yeah, it that's what it said in that book. There's a book that yep. the brother had bought. In there, it got like the the, uh, uh, the temple layout of Herod's temple, uh -huh. and it tells you how long it took to build and all that stuff. And it's called Herod's temple. And it's called it's Herod's temple. Book, man. And the temple is where you, where the Jews went to sacrifice and do and worship. They yep. keep their high holy days. And that's the people who Yahweh Shai is talking about. And they exist today. Still today, man. They were around back then. They never went away. Yep. There was always a sector of Edomites that claimed that identity, okay, during the time of Kagan Bull, right. which was, uh, well, I forgot what they called them guys. Khazars. Khazars. The Khazars. The Khazarian Empire. They re But you had some that already kept it that was out there like in Eastern and Central Europe. They were yep. still locked into that and they absorbed themselves into the Ashkenazi together during that time of the Middle of the Middle Ages, and then later on in the Renaissance. Renaissance. Yeah. So during the time of the Renaissance, that's when they gained even more prominence. That's when you started having like the banking families, like the, you know what I'm saying? Everybody knows about them, the Rothschilds and Mara M. Schall Bauer and his sons and all that stuff. You, if you know, you know. You know your history about the banking families. The banking cartels, they funded a lot of the wars. They funded like the wars, uh, the French wars with, under Napoleon and all these different conflicts that was happening in Europe during that time because a lot of the European countries were fighting for supremacy because the New World was, was, was just founded. So they all was trying to control their different ports, the different trade routes. Yep. That's why they had to eventually have what was called the Scramble for Africa to come to the table to divide up the, uh, Africa because they were still fighting over that. But they were they had already been fighting over the Americas. So a lot of people don't understand is that you've got to know the history. If you don't know the history, everything else is gonna go away from you. That's why you can have right. guys like Yashua 
They can come through, talk about something, and because you don't know about the history, you don't know about what the brother brought up with the Herod and them being Edomites, but them be basically claiming themselves to also be Jews too. That's right. And being also allowed to get access to that inheritance, you're gonna think that he's talking about, oh well, he's talking about you guys now that say you're Jews, but y'all persecute us, mm -hmm. which we'll get into. Yeah, but but uh, like we were talking about earlier, man, Revelation three and nine and Revelation two and nine. Uh, precepts, man. They right. precept each other. Right. Revelation 2 and 9 actually goes a little bit deeper than 3 and 9. Right. So when you brought out 2 and 9 and said that this is talking about wicked Israelites, you should have went to 2 You should have went to 2 and 9 and read down. Right. It, it clears it up, man. Clearly the men that are being bowed down to are the elect men of Israel. That's clear. Yeah. And so and it, it's got plethora of scriptures showing, proving that only the other nations are gonna be bowing down to these men, to these elect, clearly. And we're gonna get into it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can get, uh, we can get into the Doctrine of Nicolaitans. You wanna do two and nine, or you wanna just no, wait? Do, yeah, yeah, do two and nine, what you gonna do, and then uh, do the Doctrine of I'll hold the Doctrine of Nicolaitans after that. Okay. This is the book of Revelations, chapter two and verse nine. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. This is this is this is clearly talking about the Israel right here. Right. But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. There's two groups of people being brought out right there in Revelation two and nine. Right. He's talking about the it because you can go in plethora of scriptures that tell you where the Most High is calling the Israelites poor. Right. Because they're poor in spirit, man. Not necessarily in having, not having wealth, but poor in spirit, man. Not having the most high, man. Being broken, being uh, oppressed by uh, other people, other nations. And he said, but thou art rich. They're rich because they, gonna, they got the, in, the inheritance of the kingdom, man. That's why they're rich. Because they got the kingdom to look forward to, man. And those who don't believe that, they're not going to get that kingdom. They're not going to get that inheritance. Yep. And I know the blasphemy of them which say there are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those, those things which thou shalt suffer. Proving that he's talking in the first verse, he's talking about Israelites. Because he said that they was gonna, he know their tribulations. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days but thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Now the brother said about the foreign spirit, I'm gonna just bring out this quick precept. Right. This is uh, Matthew chapter five and verse three. Blessed are the poor in spirit, uh -huh. for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yep, that's right, man. And it's a plethora of scriptures that say that, man, where, the, where they refer to the Israelites as poor. And also, a uh, majority of our people are financially poor because we, yeah. we, we don't have a land, we don't have inheritances. A lot of our inheritances of the people, they're strategically taken away or, or they're spoiled in countries across the world. See, I, 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 if you study, that, if you go across seas where you know there's uh, Israelite people, study like what they go through in those countries. Right. They get, they get seizure property, uh, they get their property seized, they get their properties destroyed actually by government. Government officials will actually write up and say that their that their properties are illegal to, to own. They'll have their uh, their uh, properties vandalized. Like if they got business, they'll be looted. They'll set up riots, and when the riots will happen, they'll go and loot those the, those exact people's properties. Yep. So they're under constant oppression. When you're poor in spirit, it means it's because you're under constant been oppression. Broken, man. You've yeah. been broken down. You know what I'm saying? You're you you're a downcast. You're you're lowly. You're and when you're poor in spirit, you're humble. You're always in a humbled state of mind because you're always under attack. You're always being consistently humbled and being reminded of your lowest state. You're also hated by the world too. You're saying the world don't love you, the world hates you. So you're constantly under this consensual attack. And, and Yahweh Shai said tribulations, man. Yep. We know that there's plenty of scripture saying that the Israelites are gonna go through tribulations, man, yep. in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. Yep. They tell you that the apostles, they shall go through much tribulation All right. in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. Yep. That's Acts, what, 21 and 4 or something like that? Yeah, 
but but yeah man it's a bunch of scriptures man and let me finish reading that in in uh in chapter two this is uh verse 11 at the end he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death man yep. so he that overcometh man this is talking about the elect that's yep. going to be in the kingdom because only the elect gonna overcome and the rest is going to be destroyed man and the second death is talking about another one man because that's we had right, to get bro. on we had to get on uh millie vanilli and millie vanilli didn't believe in uh he didn't even understand like the reincarnation stuff and he didn't even understand the five pain. Yep. You saying that's the that's the second Ezra. But that second death is talking about the eternal damnation. That's right, man. Okay? Which is in the lake of fire, which is in Gehenna, which he couldn't which I, which the GMS guys they still are, don't understand that. And now now that at least the, at least I went to the blue letter and went to I give I give you applause on that one. You went into the blue letter and read Gehenna. Gehenna. Y'all been skipping it for so long. Yeah. At least you went into it, but then you were still wrong, and then you was fumbling too. You knew that what you was gonna bring out didn't make any sense. As you because reading, as he was reading it, he was admitting that the Valley of Hinnom was right in, right in Israel. Yep, that's right. We ain't saying it's gonna be up under the earth, in, inside of the earth, like, yep. like you know, like other doctrines be even pushing like the Christian church yeah, or something. Yeah, the Christian church to believe it's gonna be that's under right. the earth. No, the, right now, Sheol, like we've always been saying, Sheol is under the earth. Where the, the moment of where the souls go. When people die, they don't go up. Their souls don't go up, their souls go down. That's right. You saying now you can have a situation like you can have a situation like Paul did and go and be sh be shown the glory. But your soul, ah. like we brought out with uh, an example with Samuel. Yep. Your soul goes down. It has to come up out of rest. Yep. Out of where the souls go. Your yep. spirit goes back to the most high. Your spirit, your body goes into the grave, into into the actual physical grave, which is another word in Hebrew, then the actual Sheol is the grave for the souls. Then your spirit goes back to the Most High, like it says in Ecclesiastes. That's right. So we already broke that down. You know what I'm saying? We already broke that down, how that goes when someone passes away. So the second death, and it has to deal with the eternal judgment, right. which is the second death. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read this real quick because the issue that the brother was bringing out about the elect, you're saying that the elect is going to have the non-elect bowing down to them. Oh, well, before we get into that, because the brother has some, we have some precepts on that aspect of what it's talking about. But this is your doctrine y'all have over there in GMS, and some of you Islamic groups have this same doctrine too, especially when y'all when y'all try and talk about the kingdom. Now, this is uh, the Book of Revelation, chapter two, and we'll start at verse. 14. Because remember, we talked about Pergamos. Y'all got a lot of the characteristics of GMS. Y'all got, y'all look like the church of Pergamos to the T. So y'all need to examine yourselves. That's why this actually is, was given by Yahweh Shai to tell the churches so they can correct themselves. God. So what was it, what did he want the church of Pergamos to correct? Well, we'll start off at verse 12 and then we'll get to the point. And to the angel of the church, in Pergamos, right? These things said, which had the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Just so happy we're in Babylon. God. You know, the Muslims, they call this place the Great Satan. Right? So they call this stuff the Great Satan. Now remember, this was a prophecy from 2,000 years ago. Now, it was told to the churches back then, but it's still relevant today. In fact, it's more relevant than ever today because it's, it, we're in the end times. And thou holdest fast my name. And in the days uh, where in Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwelt. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balai to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication, which y'all promote. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Mm -hmm. And the doctrine of Nicolaitans was dealing with the belief that you should rule over the, the people, much like how the elders in Israel were looking at it. So like you had the Sanhedrin, you had the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, 
they had a mentality that they were not serving the people but ruling over them. And there's like a fine line because when it says obey them that have the rule over you, meaning those that are over in authority of leading you. That's what, that's what it means when it says that. So y'all, a lot of people try and think it's the same thing. It's not. God. Because if you have people that are set, that are already set up to help guide you in your salvation, they're, they're going to tell you the best thing for you. They're not, they're not supposed to be misleading you. And you should know that by going to your scriptures. When you go to your scriptures, if a brother's saying, hey, go and do this and that. But, oh, no, go and, if we're telling you to go eat pork, you should know that we're false teachers. You should be able to examine that. So when you get discernment and you know, hey, these brothers have the best interests at heart for me, it says obey them because we're trying to make sure that you're getting, staying on point. However, the way they look at it is, when you rule over people, I, what do people do? They tax. You yep. notice that these groups, you gotta pay them money. You gotta give them money. You gotta give them money as part of being under them. That's right. In a lot of these groups. Because when you rule over something, you tax it. They become tributaries. So they gotta pay tribute to you. So that's the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And that's the doctrine that your elders teach. That they, that they got people gotta come out their pocket for them. Okay, and we're not talking about sharing. We went into it last week. We're not talking about sharing as a as a all things common, helping one another. St. Mark, chapter 10 and verse 42. But Yahweh Shai called them to him and said unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. And you know how you know this structure is true? The Esau has a pyramid structure. It's top to bottom. God. The, the church, the elect, is bottom up. So you got the foundation and the cornerstone. So the top servants, is Yahweh Shai the cornerstone and the other foundation, which is the apostles and prophets. And everybody else is upheld by them. So it's a bottom up, not a top down. That's right. You get what I'm saying? Yep, yep. That's why the, 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 the servants in the kingdom, they're known as the foundation, the great ones. That's right. The cornerstone, the apostles, and the prophets. That's what it tells you in the epistle. Yep, that's right. You know what I'm saying? So that's exactly how it goes. Bottom up. The, the, the Gentiles, the heathen, they go top, bottom. That's right, man. So when you're saying that the other, that uh, that wicked Israelites are going to be coming back to bow down to you, when you talk about Revelation three, you you first of all you already misdiagnosed who the who the Jews that were not are, and then two, you're now discounting them from having to bow down to you, and you you. You jumped over them to say, oh, it can't be them. It can't be Esau yeah. and the other nations bowing down. Uh -huh. It can't be those that say that they're Jews with small hats. It's God. You skipped over that and said it's your own people. Yeah. Come on, man. And he was just saying, though, too, it can't be Esau. That's uh, why it can't be Esau that's going to be said to be burning in hell instead of your own people. You know, you guys are quick to put your own people to be burning in hell, but not Esau and these other nations. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Yeah, but you don't even want the other nations to come bowing down to you. You want your own people to come bow down to you. Yeah, you skipped over that. But this is Isaiah, chapter 60, and I'm going to start at verse, uh, I'm going to start at verse 10. But my point is in 14. And the sons of strangers shall build up the walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually, 
they shall not be shut day or night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles that their kings may be, may be bought, brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of thy sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas they has been forsaken and hated, so that no man went, went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. So clearly the scriptures is saying that these other nations are going to be the ones that's going to come bow down to the feet of the elect. And, the, and starting first with Esau. That's right. Especially those that said that they were, they were us. Those that afflicted thee. Those, that, them small hats, those are the first ones that got, are going to have to be bowing down. Right, man. And the Edomites, man, they're the ones that's going to, they're going to lose power. You know, when you see a lot of you guys, man, and it's unfortunate because, you know, what's his name is a student of history, Yashawamba. When you go into war and you lose, the other side lose a war, do you know the first thing that they got to do? They got, when they, they, when they surrender, they bow down to who they lost. To. That's right. When the Japanese lost the World War II, Went out in, uh, in Japan. They sent uh, the emperor. I don't know his name at the time because at that time it was Imperial Japan before it became like a republic or whatever. They, they got a president. They had an actual emperor, and they had to send their military heads. And those guys, you know what they did? They. That's why Eastern culture. You gotta you gotta study Eastern culture because a lot of that is closer to ancient world culture. The, the Japanese came through and they bowed down. They bowed down, See the showing movie. respect to the general. I don't know who the general was at that time, but the general had to go there. Yeah. And then eventually the president yeah. had to go there. Uh, F the FDR. I, I seen that at the, uh, at the uh, in Hawaii, man. Yeah. At the, the display of the, uh, what was that? Um, Pearl Harbor? Yeah, the Pearl Harbor thing. Yeah, so they bow down, bro. When you conquered, the loser bows down to their to, to the ones that conquered. Them. Even in the movie 300, what Xerxes wanted uh, Leonidas to do. He wanted them to bow down and, and give tribute. Yep, that's what he wanted them to do. He told him he's gonna still be able to keep everything he wants. Yeah. Just bow down before. Yeah. So you guys, you gotta understand, like, how's it your own people, man? Idiots. You supposed to be the have y'all supposed to be the frontliners, man. But I was like we were talking about too. If, 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 if that is Israelites bowing down to them, how do those wicked Israelites come back into the kingdom, man? Through reincarnation, right? Through who? Through the elect, right? According to their doctrine. According to y'all doctrine, the wicked Israelites gonna come back through y'all. So are they, when they gonna start bowing down, they gonna come out the womb bowing down? Are they gonna have to start walking but so they can bow down to you? Are they gonna get to a point in age where they're gonna see, oh man, daddy. Oh man, you was yeah, in the look. That's gonna be your son. Out. That's gonna be y'all son. Y'all son's gonna have to bow down to so you. So your son's gonna be bowing down to you. And say, hey, we was the fake Jews, and daddy was the real Jews. They coming back through through the elect. Now that's y'all doctor. We was the ones that were the Jews and we were not, but we do <laughs> lie. Because that's what the scripture says, right? Yeah. So your own children got to come to the realization that they were the Jews, that they said that they were Jews and were not, but did lie. Did lie. They have to come back and say, oh my goodness, my daddy, I got a bow down to you. I was a, on the other, I was a Jew. I'm sorry, I said daddy. I was a Jew and I was not, and I did lie. I'm so sorry, I now got a bow down to your daddy. See how that sound, That's man? Goofball, That's goofball thinking, bro. See how that sound? Use your own reasoning and think about whether or not that makes sense, Akio. It don't make no sense. See, sense is not even common no more, man. That should have been a red flag in your mind before you even dropped the lesson. Come on, man. Should have thought about where, where the record Israelites gonna go because according to your doctrine, there is no resurrection of the unjust because y'all only believe that the resurrection is gonna be for the believers. And this was a promise, man. This goes back, this goes back to Genesis. 
Y'all don't understand judgment, man. And that's why scripture says, the wicked men understand not judgment. It says that. That's why you be like, man, wicked, it's like Jay-Z, Beyonce. You saying they ain't gonna come back? Yeah, they're most high. If they don't repent, this is their glory. Wouldn't have been Yahweh Shai saying, you had your reward, you had your consolation? God. That's right, man. He said, woe unto them. He literally said, woe unto them. Woe means death and dis meant destruction unto them. They're not coming back, bro. They're not coming back they as y'all babies and bowing down to you as... Jay-Z got, uh, Beyonce got Baphomet, Beyonce had Baphomet rings and stuff. Jay-Z got Aleister Crawley shirts, talking about, do as thou wilt. And you Negro, and then they got the damn demon, that woman, she's a witch. She be around all them celebrities. Yeah, she's supposed to be some kind of stylist. Yeah, she she be doing like uh, blood, blood yeah, type stuff. That's a straight witch lady. I can't she be painting that. blood on the wall, writing stuff. Yeah, got people bathing in blood. Oh, but no, nah, that they, uh, uh, he gonna be back in the kingdom, huh? They, that that's the reason why both Camelon and these Christians they don't believe in your doctrine, because when they come when they ask you about what's gonna happen to these wicked Israelites, you tell them that they're gonna be in the kingdom and they look at you like you're stupid. Yep. And they know this stuff don't make no sense. It don't make no sense, man. When the scriptures say they shall not see the kingdom of heaven, man. Right. So they were going to be cast out into outer darkness. Those are my enemies that I should not reign over them. Bring them hither and slay them before me.